Hi everyone, so today I am filming my postpartum update for you and this is going to be the only one really and I've left it until now so that I can kind of just pop everything in one video rather than doing weekly updates. I don't think I, I don't think there was a call for me to make the, the videos that often if that makes sense. So you might have seen that I've popped my labour and delivery story up so if you want to watch that first before this video it might make a little bit more sense because uh, there's things I'm going to touch on in this video that will be explained more in that one if if you get if you catch my drift. I've made a few notes because after my labour and delivery video I kind of kept going off on tangents so I thought I'd make a few notes so I could kind of stay on track. Two months since I gave birth I had a natural labour and I also had a cut and a no sorry a tear and an episiotomy in labour. I only use gas and air so I can't really talk about any of the pain relief and what I felt like after it. Um, I was the day after I'd given birth I was just very very sore and very very tired basically and um, it was like that for a good few days and that's the best way that I can put it. Um, it was down there obviously because I'd had stitches because of my episiotomy. It was very uncomfortable and they gave me painkillers. I was having paracetamol and ibuprofen and they gave me a painkiller whilst they were stitching me up as well. And it was okay to be honest, I was absolutely petrified of going for my first wee because a lot of people had mentioned that, that it's it can be quite a thing, but honestly I didn't even really struggle. Um, it took me quite a while to go because I get really bad stage fright and if I'm under pressure to go and you have to produce so much urine after you give birth to prove to the midwives that basically everything's working okay. So I was under pressure and I really struggled, but when I did go I was fine. I did buy, if you watched one of my hospital bag videos, I bought like a portable B day to kind of like squirt over myself to make it to soothe the area as I was going to the toilet. I've gone straight into it, haven't I, with this one. Um, I was just about to say no beating around the bush, but I'm not sure that's the best term of phrase to use. Um, but I didn't even use that, the B day thing, because with the first wee, they have to measure how much you are weeing. You can't then add a load of water to that. And I could have like measured how much I was pouring over me and then taking that away but it was just a bit of a faff and I just kind of thought I'm just going to bite the bullet and go for it and it was all right it was fine. I was having ibuprofen and paracetamol for maybe like two weeks after the birth every day every four hours I knew I needed paracetamol and um, it wasn't a case of like oh I suppose I should have some pain relief it was like right when am I next having paracetamol obviously everyone's different this is just my experience and we really struggled with the feeding for the first few weeks and I ended up with mastitis and um, just very very sore boobs from breastfeeding it was honestly the most painful thing I've ever experienced um, and obviously you're going through this kind of pain and um, mastitis it was just horrible and you're still feeding your baby on your boobs so and they say that one of the best things to kind of draw out the infection that you get with mastitis um is for baby to carry on feeding so I was on antibiotics for that too I, I've just I've gone off on a tangent already I've gone completely off track but basically you just feel very tender down there um obviously that's what you'd expect day after when they discharge you from hospital they ask they actually ask you the question of what contraception you're planning to use because this is a time when you're most fertile after you've just had a baby and people don't realise and I led there thinking he ain't never coming near me again the way I feel right now why, why are you asking me these kind of questions I've got a baby um have to have done the deed don't need to do it ever again but now I would say they say from six weeks you can have sex again um that that's the time they kind of recommend and I say for me it's probably I feel like I would be ready round about now and we're eight weeks out. Six weeks, there was no chance. And yeah, I would say about eight weeks for me, it's everything feels kind of like back to normal and I feel myself again. Um, I have been trying to do my pelvic floors. It's just, as they say in hospital, do them while baby's feeding. But we, every feed when we got home from hospital in those first two weeks was such an ordeal that for me to sit there and think oh I'm going to do my pelvic floors right now it just wasn't going to happen so now we're a bit further on and um, I've been really trying to like make an effort to sit and do them um it's just one of those things I know that it's really really good to do but you just never you just never get around to it I don't know they are important 
been told. I'm going to be uploading a breastfeeding story video and I will talk about the mastitis in more detail on that in that video. Um, but my boobs were so so sore. Um, he had maybe had tongue a tongue tie that we did get fixed, and also I don't think his latch was particularly great. Um, we just really struggled, and um, as a result of that, one of my boobs I think dried up pretty quickly, and he went right off it. And then the right boob, um, they both at, at at times had mastitis, but one was definitely worse than the other. Just very very gunky, very very sore. If you're thinking you're the best advice I can give is that if you are breastfeeding and you're like three days in you're thinking this doesn't feel right because it should only hurt for the first few seconds when baby first latches on, get help there and then. Don't do what I did and just carry on thinking that everything's fine um, because I ended up in a white old mess and it, they were so sore, so, so sore. As I say, I was on antibiotics for that. I'm just going to show you two products really quickly because they were really important in my kind of postpartum recovery and part of the breastfeeding process, I guess. The first one was Lanolin by the company Lansino. Um, this is like a really, really thick kind of Vaseline texture and it worked a treat. I would kind of like lather, slather this on, even not lather, slather this on to both both nipples. It's fine for baby to then latch on. It's gotten like nothing harmful in. Um, so baby can feed even though, even if this was on the nipple basically. It really, really soothed them and I think it helped them heal a lot quicker than they would have done without this so I would really recommend that um, if you are breastfeeding and also these little contraptions so these are just kind of like a clear silicone um, pad basically they're called lily pads and I'll link them down below you can get them on Amazon and one of the ladies that kind of came to talk to us about breastfeeding recommended these to me because I was using breast pads and I think it was I they came in handy later on but when my boobs were so infected and so sore, the she kind of explained it to me that if I had chapped lips, would I then put Vaseline on them and then attach a piece of paper? You wouldn't. Um, and that's how she explained it to me on when we were talking about boobs so um, and infected nipples. So she recommended these and I honestly can't recommend them enough. I know there are a couple of different types out there, but these basically stick to the nipple um, and you just wash them with like a little bit of warm water and moisturiser but they stick to the nipple and it means that if any milk leaks out it sits in the cup which obviously is really really good because it's got antibodies in and things like that that can help heal your nipples so it was kind of like a two-in-one product but it meant that every time I was peeling them off I wasn't screaming out in pain. They were sore but nowhere near what it was like if my nursing bra or the breast pad was touching my boob so I just wanted to um, talk about those two products and as far as kind of like blood loss and things like that um, after you give birth there's a thing called blockia which you kind of bleed for a few weeks after you give birth and at the start it's quite gross I'm not gonna lie you lose quite a lot of blood I think it's the lining of the uterus kind of clearing itself out I might be wrong but that's what I want to say and I had the Boots, Boots Maternity Pads were my absolute favourite. They're about this thick and really, really long. And when you first buy them, you think, there's no way I'm ever going to need them. Come on, like, I've had periods before. I've, you know, oh, let me tell you, you will need those maternity pads. The best buy ever. And when I came out of hospital, I actually panic bought, like, four more packets because I was getting through them that quickly. Um, I've still got a couple left. I think I might need them when I have my first period after having baby. I'd say the bleeding reduced massively by about three three to four weeks I would say. Um, it's like really 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 heavy red blood and it goes to kind of like a dark pink and then it's brown and now there's not really much going on to be honest. We're just waiting for that um, the inevitable for that first period to come around and then it starts all over again. But I can't recommend those maternity pads enough. I because I did tear and have this episiotomy so I was stitched up for a long long time when I was going to the toilet I would just dab down there and it did mean that I'd never really felt clean because they recommend you don't really use shower gel but if you use it up here you can let it trickle down but don't actually use it on the area and um, also use wipes because the dragging motion isn't going to help matters um but I just found that I didn't really feel clean for so long after so because you're not really meant to have a bath I was so petrified. Um, I still haven't sat and had a bath yet. I think 
I feel like I could now but I was too petrified at the start because everything was just so sore and it felt like if I sat down too quickly everything was going to kind of rip open which I know is really gross but that's how it felt. So one thing that really helped me was in the shower. We have got like a handheld shower as well in our shower but if you don't have one of those I would just take a jug in the shower with you and kind of like pour the water over that area so it's getting a little bit more of a clean than just like the shower running on your, off your shoulders like it usually would. The other thing that I just thought about to talk to you about was, um, oh yeah, sitting down after stitches down there was quite uncomfortable but you could just kind of get used to it. You just kind of get used to a bit of a waddle and one day you just wake up and think, oh, I feel all right. I feel my, myself again. I don't feel like I need to waddle today. I've, I've lost a little bit of weight. Obviously, I don't have a baby anymore in, inside of my tummy. Um, I think I've lost just over a stone. I've still got probably a stone to go. I put on maybe two, two and a half stone during pregnancy, but it's Christmas time. It's not a priority. I'm not dieting. A can of Coke and chocolate buttons are getting me through the days at the moment. And um, after Christmas, I'll reevaluate that, I'm sure. But at the moment, it's not a concern. I obviously, I feel like in some clothes I look really, really slim and then I just have this kind of like pouch where baby was, um, which I guess is completely normal and it will eventually, hopefully go down a little bit. And I think that's about it for the uh, physical stuff. Again, if any of you want me to do a question and answer on anything baby related or anything labour related, anything like that, you just need to ask me. I might do it on Instagram. I'll pop my Instagram here if you want to go and give me a follow. I might do that with the little questions thing they have on there because um, it seems to work really well rather than doing a video. Mentally, the mental recovery after childbirth is like a completely different ball game. I cannot tell you. Um, I feel like you don't get a chance to catch up with yourself. That's like the best way that I can um, that I can describe it. And everyone says that your hormones are worse in the fourth trimester, so after giving birth, than they are throughout pregnancy and when I was pregnant I was like how I've been a bit of a crazy a crazy woman and um, throughout this pregnancy how can they be any worse I've cried every day this that and the other oh they are um, or they were for me certainly anyway and it's not just your hormones it's like a real concoction of everything thrown together obviously you don't sleep and um, for the first first week at least when we brought Rupert home he would only sleep on my chest or Tommy's chest so you can't fall asleep if he's asleep on you. There's one day that I was awake for 32 hours straight, around 32 hours, might have been a couple of hours more. You don't sleep, you're exhausted, you're trying to muddle through. You've got this new person that, though it's absolutely amazing um, and so precious and the most wonderful, wonderful time, you're getting to know this little person who doesn't really know what he wants himself or she wants himself depending on what you have and um it's all really difficult um there's just a lot going on obviously so not only you've got all of that and you've just given birth and you're trying to recover like physically and then you're running a household as well and you've got three dogs and people want to come and visit and you don't even have got yeah, have a chance to get a shower um it's so difficult and the hormones add to that. I still have moments now where I'll have a little cry, a little sob if times have been a little bit tough that day. Um, if Tommy hasn't been at home or I've not seen anybody or had any other help, um, they can feel like the loneliest days and the hardest days. And I would say that my best advice when you feel up to it is to have someone come around just for an hour so that you can go for a nap or do the dishwasher or go for a shower and also try and get out for a walk like every day because I think that really really helped or just get out of the house. At the start the thought of going in a public place terrified me um, so it was just very much that we would go for walks and things like that and now I'm obviously building up the confidence I've been shopping with him and to coffee shops and things like that but someone said to me before I had him to take every day at a time, to take every day as it comes. My advice against that would be take each hour as it comes not every day go by the hour especially at the start very very tearful the whole breastfeeding thing was I honestly feel very very traumatic for me and um, it might sound really really over the top if you've not been through it or experienced anything like that but it was hard um, and I, I will admit I did have a day where I thought to myself what have we done why have we done this we are never we're never going to get through this um, but with help and love and support and a little bit of willpower thrown in, you do get there um, and it gets easier. And it's that kind of like brain fog and the sheer emotion that you go through right at the start does 
fall by the wayside, just expect it. And when it happens, know that it is normal and that you're allowed to feel like that. Um, I think that's about it. If you've got any questions, leave them down below. I will do like a little Instagram q and I think I've touched on about everything that I can think of there. I do think I was very lucky with my labour and my recovery as well. I feel now eight weeks out myself again. I'm not, I'm in jeans. I've managed to find a pair of jeans that actually fit and don't look horrific, but I'm not really in much of my kind of like pre-baby wardrobe. Um, I find that like dresses with tights um, or big polo like roll neck jumpers are like my go-to thing at the moment um but we'll get there with time at the moment baby Rupert is my absolute number one focus and um if it means I have to spend quite a few days in this hoodie I really don't mind because it's very very soft and snuggly buy it oversized buy massive leggings comfy socks keep your maternity leggings and those massive knickers you bought for um your labor keep them and um yeah you'll be fine thank you for watching please do subscribe if you did enjoy and you haven't subscribed already it's so easy to do and it really really does make a difference and i will see you all in my next video